Uh, this is to give you guys some of the uh, how-to. And this is a double zero scouring pad. I did get this at Ace Hardware, uh, our true value, one of the, your typical hardware store. I'm sure that uh, Home Depot or Lowe's has them too. They come in different grades. They have 0, 0, 0, 0, they have 0, 0, 0, and they have 0, 0, and this happens to be a 0, 0. And it works real well. Um, I'm just trying to smooth it out some so you can see the markings on it. This is the Wagner Wear. It's got a model number on here near the bottom. You'll be able to see it when I'm all done. But yeah, this takes quite a bit of elbow grease, and that's why these reseasoned restore vintage skillets cost what they do. Um, I'm finding I'm really enjoying it and hopefully in the future I can kind of restore these, maybe flip some, and it'll give me some silver money. You know, you got to do it however you can do it, guys. And I don't have the income that I used to, but uh, at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and take a break now. All this rust and crap, as you can see, is coming off, so I will be right back. Okay, guys, I'm done with the basic cleaning and, and uh, scrubbing of my third pan, and it cleaned up quite well. Uh, this is the Wagner Ware Sydney O. I think that means it was made in Sydney, Ohio. does not have a Made in the USA stamp on it anywhere, so it was made uh, between probably 1910 and 1950, somewhere in there. It's a 1056Q and it is very smooth in here. It does need some sanding. I'm going to take the wire brush to this one also. And this is a number six, which means it's about eight, almost nine inches wide. So here we are. It's a very, very flat pan inside and out. It'll be a great cooking pan. Perfect. Just, uh, you know, fry up a couple of burgers or do an omelet, uh, you know, a larger omelet. This one would be a, a smaller one, maybe just one fried egg or something. But uh, it's good to get practice on this type of stuff. Um, but I, I think it's a lot of fun so far. And uh, so I'm going to do the wire brush on this, and then I'm going to season them up and show you how it uh, turned out. This video is long, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what I'm doing to re-season this stuff. Um, this cooking is the absolute greatest, um, no aluminum, and you can cook over the open fire if there's ever an SHTF scenario. Uh, this stuff is indestructible. It'll last for centuries of taken care of. So I guess that's the reason why I got into it, because of, uh, you know, my prepping. So anyway, I will be back at the next stage. Okay, until next. Okay guys, uh, I am back. Uh, right now I am sanding these pans, uh, just making them very, very smooth. And uh, and I actually put, put on, uh, instead of earplugs, I use my uh, earmuffs that I take to the shooting range. They block out all the uh, noise and I'm going to show you guys how I do this. I'm trying to put the camera here as best as I can. I have the uh, skillet, I'll just show you this between two cutting boards and I have a towel and then I have a pot holder so it won't you know rub off on my um, wood cutting board and I have two weights here to hold it down while I drill it and basically have my drill Black & Decker electric and the wire wire brush right there so uh, anyhow I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down and kinda show you how I do this and then I'll be back when I have all of them done so you can see what the finished product looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and set it down and uh, show you show you a couple of minutes of this.
there's a spot right here. It's still a little rough. I'm going to go ahead and get that. And, uh... Okay guys, I am, I think for the most part, done with this pan. I just want it nice and smooth and uh, just wanted to show you kind of how I do this and uh, okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, I'm back. I did sand it off uh, this third uh, pan and one thing about the wire wheel I want to mention is if you wire a pan like this or wire sand a pan like this, you need to make sure that you wash it off, you know, give it a nice cold rinse, wash it off really, really good because, you know, you have sediment or particles inside the pan. I'm going to have to season over that. It's a little rough spot. But uh, it's really, really, really smooth. And I think all three of these pans from my first try so far are coming out good. Um, I've set the oven for 200 and I'm going to season them now with Crisco. And uh, i got to get it out here. I'm rather unorganized today by trying to show you on a video what this actually looks like. But I'm going to get my Crisco out and uh, show you what I do. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven now at 200 degrees. And basically it's just to warm everything up. Put them in there. And we're going to put this one in. And uh, these are all cleaned up. Now we're going to let them heat up for 15 minutes. And uh, there we be. And uh, I'm going to set the timer for uh, 15 minutes. I don't know if you can see that. Here we go. I'm going to let them heat up. And basically that opens the pores of the iron. And uh, there we go. We're going to let it come down to 15 minutes. And... Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, rub our seasoning on, so I'll be back. Guys, I am back. I'm going to start taking these puppies out of the oven. Uh, this one is 200 uh, degrees. I'm going to go ahead and put it down here on this uh, towel. We're going to go ahead and uh, wipe her down uh, with a uh, notice my uh, year of the rooster uh, oven mitt. <laughs> Had to get that in. I use Scott towels and actually to dry them off or uh, wipe wipe everything out but i have a rag which i'm going to put a uh, crisco on i'm going to put a real nice coat on and it is pretty pretty warm to at 200 degrees and uh, i'm going to get a nice layer on it this is the first uh, layer of seasoning i'm going to do I'm probably going to do either two to three coats on here. And um, anyway, you want to get a real good one down. And you want to get a lot on. Make sure you get it all in all the crevices here of uh, the various parts of the uh, skillet. And I'm going to do that with all three of mine. And uh, get it all in there. This is this is actually harder than it looks to videotape it. Oops, okay, I cheated. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and give it a very generous coat of Crisco, and we're gonna do that with all three pans. Once all three pans are done, I'm gonna move my oven up. To to 300 degrees, set the timer for 15 minutes and let them heat up some more and have this start to bake on. So, nice even coat, I want to make sure I get plenty on 
Get all the crevices of the handle. Just make sure to get everything because you want to protect it from rust. And um, and see how it does. It's a very smooth pan. I think it's going to be very, very usable for me. Uh, nothing that I would sell though. Uh, but I'm going to be on the hunt for things as I get better at this that I can actually sell. Because how many skillets can you use? I mean, some people have huge collections. Uh, let me go ahead and put another uh, coat on here. Just make sure to get a good amount on here. And 200 degrees allows the skillets to have their pores open. So you can... So it will soak in. And I'm going to get it all around the edges here. And now I'm going to turn it over again. And what we're going to do, and this it may sound funny to some of you, is I'm going to wipe it all out. Because you don't want to have too much because it will just pool in the pan. And I'll wipe it really good because it's already soaking into the pan. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip her over. Do it on the back. And I do a double layer of these uh, Scott towels. They're, you can get them from Home Depot for about two bucks a roll. They come in a six pack. And they're industrial towels. They're lint free and they work great on these skillets. So. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put that in. That's kind of what I'm going to do with all three of them. So I'll show you after I get the first layer of seasoning on. The oven uh, just um, ringed at 300. Uh, I took them all out, just wiped them down one more time to make sure nothing was pooling, and put them back in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the oven up to 400 degrees. And I'm going to set my timer for two hours. And we're just going to let it bake. And um, I'll just keep them in the oven to cool down once they're done. And then I'll do, do this two more times. By then, uh, then when I start to cook in them, they'll have a nice uh, layer of seasoning. But two to three times should be enough for these. I'm going to do them three. So I will show you when I'm all done with the um, what these look like when they come out after the first time because I don't want to, you know, then in a future video I can show you what the final product looks like. So, all right, guys, until next time, Lady Liberty back here. Uh, I uh, just cooked the skillets in their seasoning after I rubbed it off a second time after it was in 300 degrees for 15 minutes. Did uh, rub down and put it in for two hours. So we're going to see what it looks like. This is after one seasoning. Okay, so I'm going to get them out of the... Ooh, it's still hot. Ah, okay, we're going to get them all out here and see. This is my little guy, the little skillet. This is the, uh, the one that was unmarked. And this is the Wagner Ware. It's hard to hold the camera and do this at one time, but I'm trying to do that. Oops. Okay, here we go. So this is what the Wagner Ware looks like. It's not completely black, but it'll get black over time. But it looks like that after seasoning it. And this is a a very old pan. It's probably 50 or 60 or older than that. But you can really clearly see the uh, writing on the back now. It's a very smooth surface. You can see the, the glean on it. This is the uh, unmarked one, the 6 inch. Number 3. It's an H on there. It's got an H on the back and it's also got an H on the handle. So I'm really not sure what this is. If anybody watching this knows, let me know. I'll do another seasoning in the morning. I'm going to give the oven a rest today. Uh, I started these all, it just took me one day to take it from crusty, rusty pans 
to uh, partially presentable. Now this is the one that's unmarked. I think it is a um, trying to remember now what it what it is, but it's number eight. It's a little over ten inches. It's got a heat ring on the back. It indicates that it's old. It doesn't have markings made in the USA, so all three of these pans were mo more than likely made well before 1960 uh, if they were made in this country. This looks to be uh, Birmingham, I think it was. I think it's a Birmingham stove and range down from Alabama. So, uh, yeah, it did really nice. So that is what they look like. And um, there we go. I had a little bit of water. I just made some dinner here. Don't want to get that on the pan, but it, uh, it's warm enough now it'll dry off. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this now. I just wanted to give you guys a rough idea. I do have some pickups coming. So I have some other, I have, I'm have. i way behind on my videos. I've been really busy. Um, but I do have my June pickups that I've got to do. I think you guys will enjoy that. And uh, once these are finally seasoned with the third time, I will show you on a future video what these puppies look like. But uh, they're kind of, uh, they will be ready to go. They're very smooth. And, um, yeah, I'm very happy with this first effort. So thanks for watching, hanging in there with me. Um, it's probably been a pretty long video, but to show the process from start to finish, it's uh, you've got no choice. But there we have it. Um, thanks, guys. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll be back. Take care.